Hi, uh, welcome to Access to Europe, our a project together with Technopole Peninsula, the AH Car um, France, and uh, here Cube. We are happy to have you here for the first webinar. And my name is Christina. I'm head of H2020 in uh, here in Berlin, and I'd like to speak about today um, about legal issues. Uh, startups face when they come to Germany. My background is I'm a PIT lawyer and uh, uh, I'd like to start uh, with uh, some issues you face. So the first thing startups think of when they come to Germany is how to found a company, what do we have to do with my uh, contracts, uh, but a very important part is the intellectual property. So the IP isn't solely relevant to larger businesses or those involved in developing innovative new products. All businesses have IP and it can be a highly valuable asset that needs protecting. It is a difference between the value of your business in terms of its physical assets and its real value in the market. So for startups, IP is a top source and of competitive advantage. Um, I would like to start with a case study. We call it, let's call it the Curious App. So a startup, a limited liability company, according to German law named Matrix, develops a device, let's call it smartwatch, that permanently checks basic health parameters of the human body. They further develop a software, an app, to be used in connection with the device that is able to analyze uh, certain kinds of dysfunctions of the human body based on the data provided by the device. And it is also able to identify certain diseases by comparing the individual data supplied by the device with external data on common diseases. The startup further devises a cloud-based data store with medical data on common diseases to be used by the software. And finally, they have a website where users can download the app for free and where they can buy the device. The company decides the name to name its device Meditective and the app Meditect. So I leave this case now and give you a smaller introduction of why do IP rights matter. So IP also in Germany, and this is very important to think of, grants you a temporary monopoly with, respe with respect to the economic exploitation of such a right. This is the reason why the question whether a company is the owner of the IP right is a decisive point for VC investors and so also a decisive point for you. But how long does IP protection exist? So we can define 20 years for patents, 10 years for registered trademarks and 70 years for post-mortem auctoris with respect to copyrights. Which, are, which IP rights are now concerned in our case, which I just presented to you? So the device that is developed needs patent protection. The product name Meditective needs trademark protection. The software needs protection and is protected by copyright and the URL name and needs the name and the trademark protection. What is the main difference between patents and registered trademarks on the one hand and copyrights and know-how on the other hand? So just be reminded that patents and registered trademarks are registered in official registers which can be checked, whereas there exists no registers for copyrights or know-how in Germany. What is the geographical scope of IP protection? Is its scope national, regional or international? So normally the geographical scope of an IP right is limited to the territory or of the country. But think strategically. What is the ideal level of protection for the meditative products and for your products? So the ideal degree of protection is always an international one. But you always, in particular as a startup, you have to um, consider your budget versus the relevant market for your business model. 
So how can Metfix, our startup in my case, get now international re or regional protection for its IP? Um, with regard to patent, we have the chance of international patent protection that can be obtained by using the possibility to file a patent application under the Patent Cooperation Treaty, PCT. Such an application can be, may be filed during 12 months after a national patent application has been filed. Um, we also have the chance of regional patent protection, so German patent or the European patent. With regard to trademarks, we have several chances. So the first is that you can obtain international pro uh, trademark protection. That can be obtained by using the Madrid Agreement concerning the international registration of marks or the and the protocol relating to the Madrid Agreement. At the PCT, um, like patents, both instruments enable applicants to file applications with one central body for different countries. So you don't have to apply in Germany or in France, just look for the central body and file internationally. Thus, if several countries are designated as target countries, then the applicant receives a bundle of trademark rights. The reason why there are two instruments in the fact that the EU is a member of the protocol but not of the metric agreement. For the agreement was made long ago, it did not allow a supranational structure to become a member. Many states are members of both the agreement and the metric protocol. The procedure under both instruments are administered by WIPO. Very practical for startups coming to Germany is to make the choice of the uh, European trademark. So this can be obtained from the EUIPO, the European Intellectual Property Office, which applies the, Euro, um, the um, community trademark. Unlike the European Patent Treaty, for example, the European trademark counts the applica applicant one single trademark uh, covering all member states of the European Union. So if the mark to be registered as, uh, as European trademark violates a prior mark in one of the member states, the application can be nationalized. For example, the applicant trans can transform the application into a bundle of national applications. So what is the advantage of a patent protection uh, for software, because software is also important in our case and also for you as startups who have a software product. So a patent grants its holder the exclusive right to exploit the protect, uh, protected technology commercially during 20 years. Copyright only enables its holder to prevent third parties from copying the subject of the copyright. Thus, if two people have the same idea, Copyright protects both ideas, as long none of the two has copied the idea of the other, whereas a patent ensures that only one of them can exploit the protected idea commercially. So the next point would be, can software be eligible for patent protection? That's also a very important question you as a startup will have. So in principle, yes. Um, provided that the concerned software can claim novelty and technicity. In the past, the German Supreme Court did not consider software as being eligible for patent protection. The Supreme Court argued that the software lacks technicity from the outset because it is nothing more applied mathematics. Fortunately, the Supreme Court has changed its opinion drastically. Now it is sufficient that the software is eligible for patent protection if it is a based on technical consideration and if it provides a solution for a technical problem. The Supreme Court in Germany even granted patent protection for a storage media containing a certain software provided that the software has technicity in the above mentioned case. The European Patent Office follows more or less the same line. So, how do you have proof priority in cases involving copyrights? This is very, very important. We call it the priority principle. 
in case of conflicting applications and copyrights, the one who has the first who was the first to file his application for patent and trademark protection or who acquired the copyright obtains the IP protection for a certain territory, for example, Germany. Now, what happens if two applicants have developed the same invention, mark or software? Who will get the IP protection? This is always a big issue. So you can solve this very easily. Um, you can look for a lawyer or a specialist in Germany and you can deposit the work being subject of a copyright with a lawyer who can later on testify the receipt of the work. In France, you can reach the same effect by sending um, a so-called envelope solo to the National Institute of Intellectual Property. So, can IP rights be used as a collateral for startups? Yes. Under German law, you can activate your IP rights in the balance sheet of your company. However, you have to assess their value first. Um, the assessment of the value of startups um, can be made uh, by special companies. Uh, you will have to look it up for you and your lawyer you can, will contact in Germany can help with that. Now, some very important parts. Also, if you come to Germany, you uh, start working together with corporates and you start thinking about uh, IP transfer agreements or you speak with the VC uh, about um, financing your ID. So, um, here are some key issues with regard to IP transfer agreements. There are 10 issues you have to think about. The first is preparation of the IP transfer agreement. In particular, the non-disclosure agreement and the letter of intent. The second, definition of the IP to be transferred. Then, assignment. There is no obligation to assign. Closing. Make sure you get your money. Then you have a duty to cooperate. The guarantee of ownership, the party rights to think of, relicensing, relicensing litigation issues and the conflict of laws, applicable law. Now some, some examples with regard to IP transfer clauses and sanctions. Case one. So founders as investors. This is always a big issue. Three persons willing to found a company invent a certain device. All agree that the invention shall form the basis of the company's business. The company is founded at a later stage when the invention is already completed. So who is the owner of the invention? The solution is that owners are the inventors, even after the foundation of the company. If they are joint inventors, none of them may freely dispose of the invention. With respect to the invention, they form a partnership under the German civil code, which exists beside the newly founded company. In other words, without any further act, the invention stays with the inventors. This is a big issue because the VC always wants to own that the invention is owned by the company. A uh, very important thing, of, uh, thing is uh, the shareholder agreement. So in our first case, um, but when founding the company, the three inventors put the following clause into the agreement. All of the shareholders shall be obliged to assign any and all right title and interest in the invention X to the company. Who is the owner of the invention now? So the solution is very easy. Owners are again the inventors and not the company. Why? The obligation to assign the IP doesn't only mean that the shareholders are under an obligation to transfer the IP held by them to the company, but nothing indicates that this has been done. In case the inventors do not comply with their obligation to assign the, the IP, the company may sue the shareholders for specific performance. But the best way to um, is to draft the clause as follows, that all the shareholders hereby assign any and all right title and interest in the invention X to the company, and now the important part, which hereby accepts such assignment. If the 
last clause is missing out, you will really have problems when you start having conversations with investors. Now something very important, which I also talked about at the beginning, employment contracts. Um, let's start with an example uh, with regard to patents. So let's think of the case that A and B work as IT engineers with an IT company. It belongs to their contractual obligations to redesign and to develop certain devices. The employment agreement uses the following clause. Any and all right, title and interest in any invention made by employee A and B shall exclusively belong to the employer, the company. Any and all claim for compensation with respect to such invention is deemed to be covered by the monthly salary. So who is the owner of the inventions made by A and B? Does it make any difference if A and B were at the same time employees or share and shareholders of the company? And uh, we take this case to the copyrights, the same cases, however, the engineers are developing new software. Who is the owner of the copyright? The solution is the following patents. In Germany, inventions made by employees are dealt with by the Employees Invention Act. Think of this when you start a company in Germany. This law provides for a set of mandatory rules which are of enormous practical importance. It obliges employers to pay an additional remuneration to the employees who make inventions. This rule may not be derogated and any and all clauses derogating the employee's claim for additional remuneration are null and void. Thus, the clause in the case at hand has no effect. The ownership with respect to the inventions made by A and B stays with them. The invention may be transferred by law to the employer if the invention is A communicated to the employer and if the employer does not explicitly allow the employee to exploit the invention himself. The act applies to employees in formal sense, the fact that in our case the IT engineers A and B are both also shareholders, does not exclude the applicability of the Employers' Invention Act. This is very important to know. What happens with regard to copyright issues in our case? Under copyright law, the clause in the employment contract would be valid in so far as the salary can be considered as a reasonable remuneration for the IP generated by the employee. In copyright law, the general principle laid down in section 31, para 5, Copyright Act, is that the scope of the user choice should be determined in accordance with the purpose envisaged at the time the contract was made. The same shall apply to the question whether a right has been granted at all. This principle also applies to employment contracts. Notwithstanding, the aforementioned principle in the Copyright Act in Germany provides for a special rule concerning the development of software. So, according to our German Copyright Act, any and all software development by an employee belongs to employer. So, the managing director is always an important person in a startup as well. So. Um, Think of a managing director of a company that is also an IT engineer. He is not a shareholder, but he has an employment agreement with the company, which provides for the same clause as we, I just mentioned. So who is the owner of the uh, invention made by this managing director? The solution is the following. The managing director is not an employee, according to the provision of the Employee Invention Act, also, he has an employment contract with the company. So, if you want to start a business in Germany, think of this clause, it's very important. As to the question whether IP rights relating to the work made by him belong to the company, the before mentioned principle laid down in the copyright law applies. Thus, if there is a sound reason to assume that the managing director was expected to create IP, then one would assume that the IP generated by him belongs to the company. This also applies to the inventions. 
So this was the last part for today. Thank you very much. And next time we are going to talk about a very, very important issue, uh, the GDPR, which came into force on May 25th. And I will give you an introduction on all relevant GDPR issues startups who come to Germany will have to face and take into account. Thank you and see you next time.